what's up guys and welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm going to be giving you my first initial thoughts and analysis on some official promotional images just released by Hasbro and Takara Tomy on the next wave of Transformers Studio Series figures. We have an entire slew of new images to take a look at today regarding the deluxe class assortment that is set to be released next month. So starting things off, we'll first of all discuss the Soundwave. This is the Revenge of the Fallen satellite version of Soundwave. I'm actually quite surprised that we are getting a second version of Soundwave so soon after the Dark of the Moon version as I would have thought Hasbro and Takara would have perhaps prolonged this for a later release. But nonetheless, here we have an image of both the backdrop and the figure itself. I think that the backdrop is perfect for this figure as of course this is where we see satellite sound wave in the movie that being in space looking down upon earth so that is a super cool looking backdrop and you can see sound wave here fully transformed up into his satellite mode and I've got to be honest and say that I still do think that this figure is slightly lackluster and underwhelming and this is one of the rare occasions where I actually think the original 2009 version may actually be superior pun intended over the new 2020 version. There's just something about this which I don't think looks too satellite-ish in its design and I just really think that the Revenge of the Fallen original version captured Soundwave satellite mode a lot better than this version. But you can see some really nice blue paint apps here which I am a massive fan of. Blue is my favourite colour so to see it be distributed all over Soundwave is really really cool. I really do like the centre section of Soundwave as well as the pylons that are sticking up above his head with the circular blue sections and for the most part the head sculpt looks super cool as well. However there is no denying that you can see Soundwave's toes at the top, you can see his hands just folded in. It definitely to me doesn't look like a really cool figure at all and he does in fact come with a display base which is quite nice. I am glad that this time around we are in fact getting a display base for Soundwave as that was one of my first problems with the original 2009 version was that you really had to stick it up against another figure in order for it to stand up. You can see that the display base is a transparent blue piece of plastic which looks super cool but there's just something about this figure I'm not entirely sure what it is that just definitely doesn't really appeal to me and it's not one that I'm anticipating too much. Taking a look at now a robot mode image of Soundwave, I've got to say that this is actually my preferred mode out of the two, despite this actually being inaccurate to the movie, as I don't believe we ever see Soundwave transform in that Transformers Revenge of the Fallen film, but I really do think this looks quite cool. I think that the head sculpt looks awesome, the detailing in the chest looks amazing, and I do like the spikes that are on the shoulders. There are obvious reuse of pieces carried over from the Dark of the Moon Soundwave, which is quite lazy, but they seem to work, so I'm not too fussed about those. I do quite like how the pylon section do fold up on the arms I think that looks quite cool and I do imagine you'll probably be able to deploy them and have them used as perhaps blades for Soundwave. The overall color palette for his robot mode is quite drab it is just grey plastic with a few silver highlights scattered throughout it but that's to be expected from a deluxe class figure although there does appear to be almost this black wash throughout it which looks almost like a specular type of paint app it definitely looks as if though it's been sprayed on by an airbrush or some sort of method like that as it doesn't seem to be paint brushes it definitely does seem to be rather pixelated so that'll be quite interesting to see what they were trying to get from that particular paint app but overall it looks quite cool it is obvious that he will in fact have ankle rocker joints which for the studio series has been hit and miss which is unfortunate but Soundwave here definitely does appear to be getting that treatment so overall for me this is probably my least favorite figure to be released from this latest wave of deluxes but I'm sure that I'll probably like it a lot more in person. Now moving swiftly on to a figure that I was definitely looking forward to, here we have the Studio Series Deluxe Class Top Spin and judging from some of these images this figure doesn't appear as if though it will disappoint at all. You can see here that the backdrop is the same backdrop that we've seen reused multiple times across some of the Dark of the Moon figures which is unfortunate, it would have perhaps been nice if they could have used the scene from where the Autobots are pretending to leave Earth so that almost NASA base, that would have been quite cool as that is where we are first introduced to the Wreckers but nonetheless I still think that this is quite a cool backdrop and of course this is where we see them battle in the final act of the movie but taking a look at the figure I think that the details on this look on point this figure definitely looks as if though it's going to be as good if not better than the previously released DOTM original version of Topspin which was a fantastic figure and even today still really holds up well this one here appears as if though it's going to have an almost customization ability to it as you can see the claws or the pincers are actually a separate piece and you can clearly see normal hands under there so if you wish to have a more humanoid look you can definitely detach those and the guns that we will see used in the vehicle mode are also detachable as well so you can use them as handheld weapons 
although he definitely does look very armoured up, which was something that Roadbuster didn't necessarily look like in his robot mode. And now taking a look at the last image we have here for Topspin, here we have him in his fully decked out, weaponized NASCAR vehicle mode, and this looks just as good as that Studio Series Roadbusters vehicle mode. You can even see the small details such as the exhaust pipes at the back rear end of the vehicle. That to me looks fantastic and is such a nice detail. This figure looks as though it's completely decked out in paint as well, from white to silver paint applications, gunmetal silver, as well as the yellow sponsored licenses. Really, really awesome. I wish that perhaps there could have been some nice silver paint applied to the main cannons on the top, but I'm sure that you'll easily be able to rectify them when you have this figure in person. So definitely a super cool deluxe and I cannot wait to add this to the collection. And now taking a look at the final and definitely I, in my opinion, the best deluxe to come out of this assortment. Here we have the Transformers Bumblebee Studio Series Cliff Jumper. Now, if you'll recall back when this figure was first announced at Toy Fair, I was completely flabbergasted to actually see this figure announced as I never thought Hasbro and Takara was going to release this, nor as soon as they really did. But this figure definitely looks as if though it's going to be awesome you can clearly see that it's got a really nice refreshed backdrop that being the Cybertronian opening scene of the Bumblebee movie which in my opinion was one of the best scenes out of all six of the live-action films you can see here that Cliff Jumper does appear to be a heavy retool of perhaps the off-road Bumblebee but of course I can't really tell too much as we only have images from the figure from the front but it definitely does look as if though he's going to share some of that engineering but I do think that the figure itself looks really awesome the robot mode looks super detailed and faithful to what we see in the film he does include Bumblebee's cannon, which I would have preferred it if they could have included his own blaster pistol, as he does use a pistol within the movie and not an arm cannon like Bumblebee does. But the details in the robot mode look awesome, and the vehicle mode looks incredibly sleek and very alien in its design, which I'm all for. So definitely cannot wait to add Cliff Jumper to the collection and expand our Bumblebee movie cast. So those were some of my initial thoughts and analysis on the newly shown product images released for the next wave of Deluxe Class Studio Series figures. Do you agree with some of my my thoughts. Personally, I think that Cliff Jumper and Top Spin look awesome, and as stated, I'm sure that I'll really like Soundwave once I get him in person. It's just some of the initial photos don't really do him justice, I don't believe. But definitely be sure to let me know down in the comment section below what you think of these latest reveals and whether or not you'll be adding any of these to the collection. Thanks for watching.